Have you ever wondered what it would be like to play a historically accurate revolutionary war era Half-Life mod? Well, wonder no longer. Let me present to you Battlegrounds 3. Battlegrounds 3 is a historically accurate FPS game set in the Revolutionary War, except instead of chanting Yankee Doodle, you have Eastern Europeans saying the N-word in voice chat. Before we get into the fun of having 10 of your musket shots completely miss, let's take a look at the history of the game. Now, the game of Battlegrounds 3 has been around almost as long as Counter-Strike, releasing in 2001 as a mod for Half-Life, and according to their website, it was the, quote, pioneer of musket and bayonet games. In 2005, a year after the release of Half-Life 2, the game got its second installment. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm not showing any footage, well, it's because I couldn't find any. I searched, like, I searched everywhere to find footage, and I, I actually couldn't. Anyways, development for Battlegrounds 3 began in 2013 as the Source 2013 engine was released. Development lasted about 6 years, with a silent beta release in November 2017, and an early access release to Steam on June 30th, 2019. As an American, I'm legally obligated to kill Redcoats and fight for the freedom of the great American colonies. Upon loading in, the main menu has a series of buttons at the top, and covering most of the screen is literally just their website that they embedded directly in the game. Alongside that, we got some good old low-quality Revolutionary War marching music in the background. Now, at the time of the first recording, it was 1 in the morning, and this game is so niche that during the very late hours of the night, you, you, just, you just won't find anyone to play with. Luckily enough, when I loaded in, I was matched with the legend himself, Dirty Dan. I played with him for a little bit before leaving and playing the next day when people were actually playing the game. After a little bit of comment, the first thing you'll notice is the muskets are accurate. Not accurate in that way, but historically accurate. They won't fucking hit anything. If you don't want your musket ball to take a one-way flight all the way to Nepal, you have to stand completely still and fire your weapon. Luckily, you can counter-strafe and do this very easily, but if you sneeze and accidentally press a key for two milliseconds, the bloom will immediately jump to a full circle. The reload is also... <clears throat> historically accurate. And by that, I mean it takes two business days to reload. This means you usually have to retreat 20 feet back to reload behind a crate or risk being stabbed in the face with a bayonet or tomahawk axe. In true British fashion, stabbing people is probably the most fun thing in this game. Jeff! Jeff! You very slow reload. Every melee attack is a one-shot headshot, so there are points in the game where you can walk into a crowd of people who all just miss their musket shots and just go fucking ham and cheese on them. I also forgot to mention classes. The only correct one to play is the Indian slash Minuteman. The other classes probably do cool stuff, but these fellas have a musket and an axe, which just makes them better than the rest, alright buddy? The maps are... eh. I think they're a bit inconsistent. The three that I played in the recording were all extremely different. The first one was a wide open swamp with sightlines into their spawn. You obviously weren't going to hit anything with these nerf guns, but it still meant that if someone got lucky, they could instantly kill you from across the map. The second map I played was like a snowy town and had a two lane layout. One of the lanes was an alleyway that went into a square area with the flag in the middle, and the other was on these stairs, and it went into a high ground overlooking another flag. This one was actually my favorite, and reminded me a lot of Counter-Strike. It was sort of like a mesh between Dust 2 and Mirage, but put into a completely different game. The third one was a giant fort which the British had to fight uphill, and this one was very similar to something like a smaller battlefield map with how the gameplay felt. Voice chat was probably the most memorable part of my session. Since the entire match had voice chat for everyone, regardless of team, you could just hear everyone and everything that they were yapping about. Are you good, Goffy? I'm a Goofy Goofy. A Goofy Goober? Are you okay, man? Yeah! <laughs> good. <laughs> goofy Goober. <laughs> now, the big question is, who would I recommend this to? The positive about this game is the barrier for entry is really low. This is mainly because 1, the game is free, and 2, thanks to the Source engine, this game could probably run on a moldy potato chip with how aged the graphics look. Even though the game is very accessible, the game itself isn't very popular, seeing an average of 13 players this past month. And like I said earlier, some times of the day having absolutely no players online at all. Is this game for everyone? Absolutely not. If you're a Counter-Strike or Valorant player and you want to try and memorize the spray pattern of the musket, this is most definitely not the game for you since hitting your shots in this game is completely up to chance. 
The game surely isn't perfect by any means, but it can be some good fun if you give it the chance. It's free on Steam, but I don't know if the developers are actually on top of the game and updating it, because from what I've seen, uh, the last update was back in 2021. So yeah, go give it a go if you feel like it. That's about all I have for you guys. See ya.